Hi, this is John from Remotify, and in this video, I'm going to show you the three new mapping types that we've added in Control Surface Studio 2.5.5. So these new mapping types are the AB Crossfade Assign, which you can view by clicking the X Control in Live. Um, yeah, we've got the AB crossfader sign, the crossfader itself, and the Q volume. So I'll first start by adding a new script in Control Surface Studio and showing you the crossfader sign options. So let's switch over to Control Surface Studio. Currently, I've got no scripts in here. I'll just add one. You can see that my VMPK controller template has been added automatically. That's the one that I want to use. So we can continue. Um, I'll add a new mode. And then in that mode, I need to add a track. The track mapping will, well, I'll just leave it set to control track one which if I switch over to live, will control this track. I then need to click on the add mapping icon for the track and you'll see this new mapping type, AB crossfade sign. Select that. And now in the settings form for it, you can see that there's this option, assignment type. And if I expand it, we have four options in here. Scroll, select A, select B, select None. Um, I'll show you the scroll option first. So I just need to assign this mapping to a control on my MIDI controller, which will be knob one. And uh, for this tutorial, I'll be using the virtual MIDI piano keyboard. It acts exactly the same as a physical MIDI controller, but it's just easier for me to show you in this tutorial. So I've assigned the controller input to knob one, which is this one on the MIDI controller. Uh, we also have button one and two here, which will be these two. Even though that one says button three, just ignore that. This is button two. Okay, so in the mapping, we'll just leave everything else set to default and I'll install that into live. New script installed successfully. If I switch over to live and reload this. So the changes take effect. Uh, if I get the controller up, when I, t when I turn the knob, you'll see that the A, B selection changes. Uh, oh, wait a minute, let me, let me turn the feedback off. Yeah, so it's best to, well, for this MIDI controller anyway, um, to turn the, feedback off just because it does weird things like you've just seen okay so I'll reload live again now when I move knob one you'll see the crossfade design changes so when I move it to the left A is selected when I move it to the center nothing is selected and then when I move it to the right B is selected um, and you can do the same with a button so yeah just change controller input to button one install that into live reload live and now when I press button one should see the same functionality. Yeah, it's scrolling 
through the options and with the current option of uh, scroll and the default uh, control what it does is it cycles through A, non and B continuously in a loop and you can actually change that um, to uh, so if I just want it to go from A to non to B and then stop I can select the custom control option change control type to increment make sure the on off velocity values are correct for the button which they are um, I'll change this to toggle because it's a toggle button install that into live and reload live and now we are on A and then it, once it gets to B you can see that it stops if I put it back to A again and you could do the same but in reverse by changing increment to decrement and it will go from it would just go from B to non to A and then stop so We've also, um, you could also use a relative um, input type, which would be an endless encoder, and they're usually relative. Um, they're usually relative. So how they work are they send one value continuously when you're turning the the encoder to the left, and then one the same value. To the when you turn it to the right, so you can see on this knob, it sends a stream of values from zero to one two seven. If this was an endless encoder, usually it would just send one value, the same value when I'm turning it left, and then another value when I'm turning it right. So you can use that with the scroll assignment type. Okay, let's go back to the assignment type. We also have select A, select B, and select none. So if you don't want to scroll through the three options, you can just choose a specific assignment type. I'll choose select A. And um, let's just set that back to default. And install that into live. And now, when I press button one, if I move that over, when I press button one, it selects A and then it does nothing else. So I set it to none, it just selects A. Then you can do the same for select B or select none. And that obviously will work with any control type. And you can use these custom control options in the same way as I've just shown you. The set okay. The LED feedback has a few different options to the normal mapping types. We have assigned to A, assigned to B, and assigned to none. Um, so how this works is quite simple, really. When A is assigned, it will send this velocity value to your um, controller input. When B is assigned, it will send this one. And when none is assigned, it will send this one. So if I just quickly show you that. Um, I don't have an RGB input, so I'll just set A and B to the same. And then I'll send the LED feedback to button 2, just for demonstration purposes. Right now, so this is button two here, even though it says button three, just ignore that. Um, how has that worked? Um, button one, it's going to send the feedback. OK, 
okay now when I press this button you can already see that because A is selected the LED is displayed if I um, let me just move this over so you can see if I select B if I select none it goes off if I select B it turns back on and the LED feedback so you can control the LED feedback either from the UI or from your MIDI controller Okay, as well as um, as well as selecting a specific track to use the crossfader sign on, you can of course use the selected track option, which um, works with all mapping types that are contained within the track. So all of the mixer controls. Um, if I yeah, so I've got track one which is going to be controlling the selected track. If I install that into live and reload it, now it will control whichever track is highlighted. So if I select track two, you can see that now it's controlling track two. Um, same if I move it to track three. And I can also use it with a red box or session box is what we call it in Control Surface Studio. I just make sure relative to session box is set to yes. And then I'll add a session box mapping type. Set that to two tracks one scene and install that into live oh i'll also need a way to control the session box so if i select a session box navigation set that to scroll and it can be controlled with the knob Now when I reload live, you'll see a red box has appeared and I should be able to move it with this knob, yep. Okay, and as the track is now relative to the position of the session box, when I click this button, we should see track three being controlled, yep. And um, if I move the session box along a bit more, now track seven should be controlled. Yep, that works. Okay, so the other two mapping types we have in this update are the crossfader and Q volume. I'll just quickly show you those as well. They're a bit more straightforward. We have crossfader, these are found directly in the mode rather than inside a track because they're not specific to a track. Crossfader and Q volume. And I'll set those to be controlled by knob one. Let's remove the other mappings. We don't need those now. Um, install that into live. And reload live. And now, if I move it over here, when I control the knob, oh, let's move it up a bit, you'll see Q volume and crossfader are moving like that. And the other thing you can do with these is you can use the minimum and maximum values to shorten the range that you're controlling so if you wanted to only control say this portion of the crossfader from here to here with your knob or maybe the Q volume doesn't need to go all the way to the top and to the bottom you can make it a bit more granular by 
selecting the minimum and maximum to be shorter. So let's yeah, yeah, just set that to 437 on the crossfader. Just bring it in a bit. Let's bring it up, reload live. And now when I move the knob, you can see the crossfade is only going from near the bottom to there. I'm um, sorry, the Q volume is going from near the bottom to here, and the crossfader is staying pretty central. And one other thing you can do with these is, which is the same with all mapping types, if I use a button instead of a knob, I can set the control to custom, set control type to absolute, and just make sure the velocity values are correct for the button. Um, do the same for Q volume. Um, absolute. Let's install that and reload live. Now when I press button one, they go from the maximum to the minimum when I press them. And yep, as I just shown you, you can change those positions using the minimum and maximum values. So you could just set them from minimum naught and maximum 100 and they will move from top to bottom and left to right. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.